Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. come and bless your word to us. Amen. Amen. I know there are many of you with experience. And as I have learned over the years, experience is not always the best teacher. <laughs> Even though his tuition fees are very high. <laughs> very early on in my Christian walk, the Lord taught me that the Holy Spirit is the best teacher. <laughs> Which means that sometimes God will tell you to go back to the very area where you've just failed. And in, in secular terms of business management, you don't throw bad, you don't throw good money after bad. But the very area where the apostles, Peter and etc., failed to catch fish. God told them, go back and do it. The reason, the, the, the reason Peter was successful was not because something drastic has changed in the circumstances. It's simply because God said so. Even if it doesn't make economic sense, if God speaks and you obey, you will get the right result. So I want to speak uh, today on what will interest practically everybody sitting here, which is the issue of not only money, but wealth. Every Every man who has the right way of thinking appreciates wealth. And I would like to differentiate between um, being rich and having wealth to start. I would say that being rich is when you work for money and you accumulate a lot of it. And I will say that my definition of being wealthy is when money works for you. You see a lot of wealthy people or rich people who have no time for family or friends because they're always on the edge. They are stressed out. And for us who are in the Lord, we cannot afford to be wealthy at the expense of our spiritual and emotional health. Um, one of the most successful businessmen in the UK, Martin Soros, the CEO um, of WPP, the largest um, advertising agency in the world, is the man people interview when they want to know the state of the economic situation in the country. Because advertising is a bellwether for the health. If businesses aren't making money, they won't spend much money on advertising. So it's always there. Um, when they go to Davos in, uh, in Switzerland, for a various economic forum, they will ask Soros and they will ask Soros, both men to give their views on world economic affairs. And somebody asked Soros, Soros one day, Martin Soros, about his personal life because he's just broken up with his wife and married somebody else maybe his secretary or somebody. And the reason he gave for the breakdown of his marriage 
was because he was full time making money. Traveling everywhere. No time for the wife. And so she got bored. She got bored with money. Because she didn't marry him for money. She married him for companionship. So you want wealth that will still give you room to be a child of God and a minister of the gospel. It's no good being rich that you become impoverished spiritually. So I'm going to show you some things from the Bible and I'm doing it in a, in a form of seminar. So if you want to get further enlightenment, feel free to ask me questions. By the way, uh, I'm going to talk about God's idea of wealth. And I will say at the outset, you definitely do not need God to be rich. That is an, an empirical fact. The three wealthiest men in the world don't claim to be, to be Christians. I don't remember the name of the first man in South America. Carlos Slim, who's very fat. The second one is Bill Gates and the third, Warren Buffett. None of them claim to be born again. And you know the, the, the second and the third have promised to give away all their money to charity. The, third, the number one says he's not interested in giving his money to anybody. <laughs> so you can't say God is blessing them because they're giving their money to good causes. He said he's, not, he's going to hoard it and keep it and do everything. <laughs> spend it. He made it, he will spend it. I think it's a son of a Lebanese family that uh, went to South America. So you don't need God to be wealthy. So don't say, oh, if I pray hard, that's the way God will bless me. God blesses, or people are blessed who are not Christians. Today you will know why. First, we want to explore um, two opposing attitudes to money. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 24, there's God warning us about the rich. Matthew 6, 24, it says, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So there, the Bible is telling us there's a conflict between God and wealth. Because the Bible recognizes who can give you wealth. Is a, is, a, is a demonic deity. The God called Mama. If you want to make money and you don't do it properly the way I'm going to explain today, only the devil can bless you. So God says you cannot serve God and serve the God who is behind wealth. Contradictory. Then in Mark chapter 10 and verse 25, it says, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. So again, when you see what God thinks about wealth, it's like, if you're wealthy, forget heaven. And yet many people want to become millionaires. Who wants to be a millionaire? Everybody will put their hands up. Who wants to go to heaven? Everybody will put their hand up. But you have to go through one door. You can't go through both. But does it mean that if you want to go to heaven, 
you have to be poor? Contradiction. So we need to find out what it means. In Luke chapter 12 and verses 18 to 21, we read about the rich, foolish farmer. So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul shall be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who has laid up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. That is the area where the conflict or contradiction is answered a little. God is not against wealth. What God is against is wealth for its own sake. God didn't say this man his soul will be going down to hell because he was rich. What God was saying is, he says, soul, take your rest. Be at peace. You have achieved the only goal you set for yourself in life. And God says, he will go to hell because he was rich, but not towards God. So to be wealthy and yet be a proper candidate for heaven, you need for God to have a vested interest in your money. If God has no vested interest in your money, your soul may actually be in danger. Then we go on to um, look at another portion of scripture that goes the opposite of what I've said but confirms what I, the remark I made that, that God is interested in you being rich only if it's rich for his sake. Um, Genesis chapter 13, we see an example here of God's attitude to money. Uh, Genesis chapter 13 and verse 2. This is Abraham. The Bible says, Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. And in Genesis chapter 26, <coughs> verses 12 to 14, then it says, Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines envied him. For the Philistines to envy anybody, you need to be really, really wealthy. Then we look at Job chapter 1. Not only were the Philistines envy of, envious of uh, Isaac, Satan himself was envious of Job. Job chapter 1 and verse 3. This is why Satan, who was in charge of making money, was envious of Job. Job chapter 1 and verse 3 says, Also, his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yokes of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household. So that this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. So if anybody was wealthy, you could say Job was among the wealthiest according to ancient Forbes record. <laughs> the difference was 
before Satan, this is my point now, my brothers, before Satan can touch Job, he needed God's permission. Because Job, because um, Satan had no contributing factor to his birth. Um, what's his name? Job had learned what I'm going to teach you today, which I hope you will hold fast and keep for the rest of your life. It will help you. It may be revolutionary, but that's the only way forward. Job was so wealthy. What did I say? Job was so wealthy that when he was in trouble, he didn't know he was in trouble until his servants came to give him report. Because he wasn't doing anything. Wealth for a Christian is an area where you'll be wealthy and it's others who are making you money. It can be done. If I am a kind of pastor who loves money, I will say by the time I've finished, you need to be putting 500 pound notes on the, on the platform. Then you want to be blessed? Then come and, come and touch my suit. And you know, but all that is fake. There is no one man who has the anointing to make you rich. If they have, they also have the anointing to take it away. Say amen. amen. Are you getting warmed up? Yes. Right. Then we have claims and counterclaims regarding who is in charge of money. First, in Psalm 24 and verse 1, God says, The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. Psalm 50 and verse 10. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. And in Haggai chapter 2 and verse 8, God says, The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. So that's on the Lord's side. Then Satan came with his own counterclaim when he was tempting Jesus in the wilderness. And the devil says to him in Luke chapter 4 and verses 5 to 7, though he says, Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. One side, God saying the silver and the gold are his, the cattle on a thousand hills are his, and the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, and turn around, Satan saying to Jesus, Ah, ah, that may be true one time or the other, but it's been delivered to me now through Adam. And I can give it to whosoever I wish. Hello? If you bow down and worship me, I'll give them to you. Somebody says he wants to give you everything in his possession. Provided you give yourself to him. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> if somebody dies and lifts all his property to a slave. There's no need for you to fight for the property. Just take the slave. <laughs> Bow down and worship me. <laughs> and then I'll give you everything. 
That's the way Satan. There's nothing Satan gives you that he'll give you scot-free. He will want to own you. All these things I will give you if you will worship me, all will be yours. Now, who wants to be a millionaire? <laughs> you see how? Satan's method is to make you the owner of wealth. If you worship me, I will give you all these things. But God's way of making you wealthy is to make you a manager of millions. You can't own what doesn't belong to you. God already said it plain, 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 plain. The earth is mine. The cattle on the thousand hills are mine. The silver and gold are mine. Did he not say that? So if everything belongs to God, and then you come around and says, I'm a millionaire. Who are you? You're a, as they say in Nigeria, you're a thief. Because <laughs> you're you claiming ownership for what has not been offered for sale. You go to Nigeria. It may be true in Ghana, it may be true in Jamaica. You go to Nigeria and you see some houses where they have painted certain writings. This house it's is not for sale. sale. In case somebody comes and gives you fake document and sell the house that is not for sale. <laughs> when was it? In last month I was in Ghana, in Accra. And um, one of our members there was telling me what a difficult time he was having renting accommodations in Accra as a Nigerian. Uh, I said, what, what's the matter? He said, well, they found a flat and they went to the landlady and the landlady said, through, through the agency, the landlady said to the agent, you can have my flat, bring one year um, rent in advance, advance payment of one year rent. And the, the agent agreed. And then the agent and this member of ours went to meet the landlady for the first time to hand over the money and to sign the agreement for. When the, um, while they were talking, the agent and the landlady were talking, they got the solicitor to go away and draft the agreement papers. Before he could return to meet them, the landlady asked this our member one or two questions. The moment this member opened his mouth, she recognized that he wasn't a Ghanaian. And immediately the landlady says, I'm very sorry, sir, but I have to give you back your money. I can't have you as my tenant. Why don't you like my money? I like your money, but I don't like your accent. You are a Nigerian. Within six months of you being my tenant, I will discover I am your tenant. <laughs> I don't know how you like it. One, one minute I'm paying you rent, you're paying me rent, and the next minute I'll be paying you. You will have done something that will make me discover that I didn't actually own this property. <laughs> So it is in the area of wealth. Satan is selling something that's not for sale. And it's giving you the idea that you are a Bill Gates or you're a Warren Buffett. You are not when you're a child of God. 
you can never, never as a child of God be a millionaire. Never. Because wealth is not for sale. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And for generations to generation, it will still belong to, will belong to God. The only thing you are permitted is to be the manager. Once God knows you are his manager, he wouldn't mind how much he puts under your stewardship. Find a wealthy man, and you find it's very, very hard for a wealthy man to be humble. Unless he's only managing money for God. That's why, my brothers, if you are really a manager of millions, you will still be faithful in church. You will still have time for prayer meeting. You will not be so proud as to believe if you leave the church, the church will be bankrupt. So what do you want to be? Manager. <laughs> Some people, eh? some of you said you wanted to be a millionaire before you didn't know where I was going. <laughs> and if you're going to be a manager, you need to be a person who obeys certain rules. And in Deuteronomy chapter 28, and verse 1 and verse 2, the Bible says, And it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings.